I've seen angel cowboys at work. My whole family was Mormons. And before I came there, my grandmother came there from, from uh, uh, back east. And she taught the Sunday school lesson at the Mormon church with the, with the Sabbath school quarterly. By the time I grew up, they were, all of that whole church were Adventists. It became an Adventist church. We were trailing cows on Sabbath. And, and much to my family's my family's uh, disapproval. One of my friends decided that it, that we should tr we should transport on Sabbath. And my brother and I, being about 15, 14 years old, I'm not just sure how old, decided that that it'd be all right if we rode on Sabbath. And of course, we knew that Grandma and my mother would not approve, but my dad didn't much care, so he says, "Yeah, go ahead and do that." Well, we went ahead. And uh, we got all together and we had about, I imagine there was 20 men there. And we were letting them out. And then on one side of this mountain, up this draw, was our church, an old log church. And on this other side, we called the back of the hills, that's where we trailed the cows. And um, we were trailing out and everything was going fine and about 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, we were getting close to where if we were straight across from the church, like the church was just over the hill, over there. And of course those old cows are bawling and a bellering, you know, and going up, and we were going right past the church. Going to go right past the church. When we got even with the church, that lead cow, those lead cows just stopped. I mean, they didn't go any place, like, like uh, something was in the way. And we started working those cows, and of course, off to the left, there's a kind of a draw and big, tall sagebrush. And of course, those cows went right to that sagebrush, and just and we just worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. Finally, at the end of the oh, an hour or two of work there, well, maybe not because maybe an hour of work. Uh, the owner came out, which was another one of the young fellows, come out there and said to, to us, uh, I just don't know what's going on. I, we can't, they won't go any further. My brother, not being an aggressive boy, but pretty straightforward, said, said to he walked up to him on his horse and, and said, uh, uh, you know what the matter is. Well, no, I don't know what the matter is. And, uh, and he says, uh, yeah, you do. He says, those cows aren't going to go past that church. And uh, he says, well, what will I do now? He says, just get out of the road and let them go back to camp, back to their pen. Well, that's two miles or three miles back with 600 head of cows. By the time we got them back there, why the church should be over. And my brother says, no, just turn them loose. Well, good. I'll go down and shut the gate after we get out of the church. And he had that much confidence. You know, he was just a little older than I was, but he was convinced. And so we all just, everybody, just left their cows, just turned them loose, went over the hill and went to church. Here we were in our shaps and our spurs and all of this stuff, and we went to church. We went back, or he went back to the pen after, after church was over, and all the cows were in that pen. You know, not everybody gets in a divine, a divine intervention, but I believe that day there was more than just cows in the middle of that road. I've seen angel cowboys at work. Looking back now, that little mountain church house has become my life's cornerstone. It was there in that little mountain church house. I first heard the word, it's my life belongs. This has been Northwest Spotlight on Mission, Extra Inspiration.